But when I speak about a supernatural rest, I'm speaking about living in the presence of God, having our eyes on Him, knowing that no matter what we face in life, it will work out for the better for us. It will work out better for our children. That is what a supernatural rest of God is. Supernatural rest isn't a thing that we have only, but it's a place that we can go. It is actually a place from where we are supposed to live as a Christian because the Bible says we are the temple of God. And then the Bible also says that we are living in Christ. We are seated in heavenly places, but we are in Christ. How many of you are in Christ? So that is a position that you as a Christian can be and dwell from because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So how do you receive the place of peace or the supernatural rest of God? Be in Jesus. No matter what you go through in life, I know every one of us are facing natural things. Maybe you lost your work. Maybe your loved one passed away. Maybe someone betrayed you. Maybe a friend doesn't want to be a friend anymore. I do not know what you have gone through this last year. But one thing I can tell you, the moment you go to God, He will give you rest. It's a guarantee. It is a promise from God. He will give you rest. It is not His desire for you to carry all this weight that you're carrying right now. It is not His desire for you. Because you're not built to carry the yoke of this world. You are built to carry His yoke that is light. Are you with me? If I see my daughter carrying something that's like more than her weight, I'm going to go and help her. But how much more our Heavenly Father? But the problem is we go like this. God is standing there and we have this weight and this heaviness on us and He's waiting. Come to me, I will take it. But we can run this race. For when I am weak, He is strong, but then we run on our own, not running to Him. The moment that you go through a time of tribulations or a wilderness times, you must remember as a Christian, there will be seasons in your life. The biggest mistakes that Christians sometimes make is they think everything is just going to be hallelujah from the day you get saved until then. No, the moment you give your life to Jesus, all of hell is not happy of you, but you have all of heaven backing you. Are you with me? That actually rhymed. I'm a poet and I don't just know it. But it's knowing that God is in control of your life. Because things will come. But God has given you the keys and a special place where you can go and hide and sit at His feet, not working for His peace. One thing that God has showed me, my wife is still learning that because I confuse even my wife. Because she knows that all the storms and all the things that we are facing. I said, but how are you just relaxed? I said, because. There's a place that you live that you just relax. A place that you live that no matter what the enemy throws at you, you just stand and you look at him knowing that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Knowing no matter what is done, it cannot affect you. It is only a matter of time. Are you with me? I want us to go to Romans 8 verse 25. And it says, but if we hope for what we do not see. So if we hope for things that we cannot see, maybe you cannot see this thing that you are stressing about being removed from your life. Maybe it's a sickness. Maybe it's a bill that you need to pay. No matter what it is. Maybe it's accusation from a friend or a family one. No matter what it is that you're hoping God for, we have to perceive it and wait for it. It says, but if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. I want to encourage you this evening. Do not give up on your circumstances because God has not given up on you. Are you with me? But verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. So when we are weak, He is strong. For we do not know what we should pray for as we owe. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Oh, but pastor, everything has to be interpreted. No, the Bible says it cannot even be uttered. It is a groaning. Because you get to a place sometimes, I don't know how many of you have been there, maybe you are special and I'm not, but I've been to places that my words doesn't want to come out. A place where you're just high for. You're like, God, I don't know what to pray. I just groan. You go before Him in your, in, your, in your secret place and you just pray. 
At that moment, you'll see a lot of your friends, your family, once that you fought, is going to pick you up. It's nowhere to be found. And sometimes it is even them throwing the rocks at you. And that is not a bad place to be. That is the best place to be as a Christian because then you no longer look to people as your Savior, but you look as Jesus Christ, your Savior. So God sometimes, sometimes it's not His plan for us to go through these things, but He allows us to go through these circumstances, through these things, that we can be strengthened, our spirits can be strengthened, and that we can build a reputation in the spiritual realm. Are you with me? Jesus, I know. Peter, I know. But who are you? Paul, I know. Who are you? The moment you're facing a mountain and you overcome that mountain, you get more authority. You're building a reputation, and then you can help other people afterwards out of that easily. Are you with me? And tonight, maybe I'll say, yeah, I'll say a bit of my testimony. And verse 27 says, Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You see, sometimes when we go through a difficult time, we just pray for the thing that we see, but we don't pray for the will of God for our lives. We pray, God, bring this breakthrough, bring this breakthrough. But God is saying this breakthrough was sent for you, for you to be shaped, for your character to be folded. But that is why it's important for you to pray in tongues, because then you pray, And in your mind, you're, you're thinking, God, this, you're going to remove this thing, but God is actually saying, no, I'm changing your character through this thing, and when your character is changed, this thing will not be there anymore. Are you with me? But there's a place where we can go into His presence, where there's a supernatural rent that does not make sense. The supernatural peace and rest of God will not make sense to the people that surround you. People that know you and know your circumstances, it will not make sense. It will not. And they will be confused. And that is how the enemy is supposed to be. He's supposed to be confused. How is this possible that you have peace in this storm? It's like Jesus. He was just lying on a boat, relaxing. I hope you understand when that boat wasn't closed. It wasn't like in a submarine where water couldn't come in. No, it was in the front and the bow of the boat. Water was coming upon him. If I just put a little bit of spray can on you when you sleep, you'll quickly wake up. But Jesus was at so much rest and peace that he went in the place that the water did not even affect him. Physically, it did not even affect him. He was sleeping. And that is what God wants you to be. Not a sleeping person, but a person that lives, lives, not sleep from a place of rest, but live from a place of rest, that you will take dominion from a place of rest and not a place of toiling. It is supposed to be easy. And it goes on in verse 28. It says, And he and we know that all things work for the better for those who love God. How many of you love God in this building? So God is giving you a guarantee. God is giving you a promise. Oh, but pastor, you haven't prophesied of me. Prophet Leon hasn't prophesied of me. This prophet hasn't. There's one prophet that's above every prophet, above every pastor, above every apostle. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he said, this is a prophetic word for you and your family. That all things will work out for the better. So the moment the storm comes, you must just look at it. It's just a matter of time. And this will be a testimony. But sometimes when the storm comes, we want to see the storm and we're like, is there a whale? Is there a shark? Is there, what is in the storm? What is putting a threat on my life? And we put so much emphasis and so much concentration on the storm that we forget about the one that walks on storms. That we forget about the one that is our prince of peace, the one that helps us and guides us. It is no longer for you to live, but for Christ to live. So why are we facing our battles on our own? Why do we carry all this burdens, this burnt out? Why do we carry it on ourselves? Why don't we just go to Jesus and say, you are 50-50 partner. Actually, you are 100% I'm zero. But I give you my problems. You're not supposed to carry your problems alone. And that is why it's even good for you to not to neglect the gathering of the saints. Because nights like this is special. Feel the atmosphere. It is special because God wants to bless His children supernaturally. And it goes on, it says, For those who are called according to His purpose, every one of us has a purpose on this earth. For whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. 
Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. So here God is saying that everything will work out for the better for you. And I will justify you. Because sometimes the burdens and the yokes that we are carrying is because of our mistakes. Let's just take ownership for our life. Sometimes the things that we are facing is because of us. We say, devil, it's you, devil. No, you just have to do this. Come out of yourself. Because I think if we as Christians sometimes get deliverance of ourselves, we will be much, going much faster and further with God. Because sometimes and most of the times we are our bigger problem. Jesus has already dealt with the devil. He has no power. Are you with me? But God will justify you and then he will glorify you. And for many of you this evening, it sounds impossible. How can God bring me to a place of glorification if I cannot even stand out of the bed? If I don't even feel to pick up my phone? I have been there many times in my life. Let's just be real tonight. Because some people just want to be pretending that everything is fine. No. It is good that we speak transparently to one another when we go through things. That the other ones that's weak in the flesh, in the spirit, can grow and can see that this battle is possible and it is not impossible for us as Christians. Are you with me? Because you are facing the same things that many people around you are facing, but you think it's impossible. But the moment you listen to someone else's testimony, but like, listen, I have more education than this person. I am better than this person, but yet they have made it. So that must make it more easier for you to understand that you can make it because it's not about your education or who you are. It is about the one that is the Prince of Peace and his name is Jesus Christ. And that is why our testimonies is very important. So if you are willing tonight to lay your life before Jesus and put your help in Him, He is faithful and just to help you. He will never leave you, the Bible says. You have come so far already. Many of you have fought many battles. You have fought so many battles, sleepless nights in prayer and studying the Word and giving and in fasting. You have done the works Yet you are still where you are. Tonight I want you to say, God, I surrender to you. I give my life to you. I give my circumstances to you. May you be Lord over my circumstances. May you give me rest for my flesh. Some of you are physically, you cannot wake up. You're, you are burnt out physically, medically, you are burnt out. But we will have to give our circumstances to Him. Maybe emotionally you are just tired, you are fed up. Maybe spiritually you feel like you're nowhere. Maybe it's just time to say, God, I'm going to stop working and start receiving. But as Christians, we have learned from a young age that we have to work, 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 work. I have to repent. I have to do this. The Bible says, believe in your heart and confess your mouth and you are saved. It doesn't even say you have to be repenting to be saved. That is for the Jews. That is not even for Gentiles. But let's get that. I'll maybe preach that in the future. We have made repentance works the power of the gospel where it is not supposed to be the power of the gospel. It is our faith in the gospel. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who repents. Oh, so why have we made repentance stronger than believing in God? Why have we made our works above believing in God's goodness and His grace towards us? Do you want power in your life? Believe. I'm not saying you must not repent, but we'll go into that subject in the future. If you still need to repent as a Christian or not. Maybe in two years we'll go into that. But we have made works, 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 works. I said this morning in Shumar's advice, that people are still repenting of things they've done three months ago, not understanding that God has forgotten about it. The Bible says, God remembers your sin no more. Yet you come to God, please forgive me. Two months ago I did this. He's like, oh, I didn't know. I forgot. And we want to work, work, work. And that is why we can never enter His peace. The Bible says, come to His, into his throne room with boldness. We come boldless to His throne, knowing that we do not earn going into His throne room. 
We go in by the throne room because of the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. That is our legal right to go into His throne room. And the moment we go into His throne room, guess what will follow us and come upon us? Peace. When Jesus saw Peter, He wasn't angry at him because of his sin. He was angry at him because of his unbelief. Jesus rebuked him and all the disciples because of their unbelief. You can read it in Mark 16. He said, go call the disciples and Peter. And do you think Jesus said, oh, you have done this. I have told you, Peter, you're going to betray me. No, Jesus didn't even give attention to that. Because he wasn't sin conscious. He was destiny conscious. He understood he's not going to put a shackle upon his people. He's going to look at them and say, but listen, I've dealt with sin and death. But your unbelief, I will rebuke you because that is what gives you power over everything that you're facing. It is a place that you go in with confidence. You can ask my wife, I can face whatever storm. I'm just, the harder the storm hit me, the more I relax. Some people, when a storm comes, it just looks like a storm, you'll, you'll see them. They'll get their pressure, they'll get everyone. I'm like, when a storm comes, I'm like, listen, when are we going to play golf? Because if Jesus is sitting until his enemy is made his, on his footstool, why are we wanting to work the whole time, not understanding that it is finished, the finished work of the cross? But the problem is when a storm comes, most Christians that want to work, 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 make themselves even more tired. Imagine... I am burnt out. If you understand burnt out and how it works, you don't want to spend time with people. You don't even want to pick up your phone. And that's the most when people take offense and leave the church like some of my closest people have done because they did not understand. Ooh, I want to be a pillar in the church. You're not even a tanastoki. A pillar can stand. Jesus is our foundation. So when a storm comes, a foundation does not move. A foundation stands. So why do you want to move forward if you're just supposed to stand with Jesus? Because the moment you move off from your foundation, it is when you get into a mess. And that is what many Christians do when they go through a difficult time or when they go through a place of burnt out. Are you with me? I want to cause you, don't give up. You have gone too far already. But tonight, just surrender to Him and receive His grace. Receive His rest. Receive His peace tonight. And I can guarantee you, the moment you yield to His presence, your life will never be the same. I think we must teach the people how to yield to His presence. It is a surrendering to God. I don't need to, you know, some Christians, and I love them. They will want to pray for two, three hours, and I love praying for two, three hours. I'm not saying it's wrong. I need you to hear for the message that I'm preaching tonight, what I'm saying. So not say, I didn't say you're not allowed to pray, pray or read the Bible. No, you as a Christian, you're supposed to, Pray. You're supposed to read the Bible. Are you with me? It is in His presence where you find all these things. And how do you get in His presence? By praying and worshiping. But there's some Christians that can pray for hours, yet you walk into the room and it's like nothing. It's like, did you just watch a movie? What did you watch? Someone killing someone watch because the presence is cold. But then you get a, a Christian that is surrendered to God. He can just do this. And the presence of God is upon him. There's a shift that you can do as a Christian. And it is not just when you are in a corporate anointing or just when you are in your inner room. No, it is everywhere you go, you must understand you are seated in heavenly places. Because sometimes when the enemy is going to come and attack you, it's going to be at the, just before your promotion or just before you're supposed to accelerate. It's not always going to be in your safe place. It's going to be when you're not ready for it. But in a matter of fact, you're already ready for it you just don't know it because you are so focused of working according to the flesh not understanding that god is the one that gives you strength god is the one that encourages you god is the one that lifts you up psalm 46 verse 1 god is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble therefore we will not fear god is your refuge and your strength and therefore we will not fear say with me i will not fear even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the seas. Imagine the earth is disappearing and you're flying in space. Even then you're not supposed to have fear. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake 
worth its swelling. Why will there be peace even though the mountains shiver? Why will there be peace even though mountains and earthquakes happen? And all these things. Why? Because there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of his most high. How many of you are the tabernacle of God? Oh. You see, we, we want to read this in the Old Testament, not understanding that this is even a prophetic word over your life, that God will put a river of the Holy Spirit inside of you that will make you glad, and not just you, a city around you, because of you. Verse 5, it says, God is in the midst of her. Are we not his bride, female? Oh, God is in the midst of her. He shall not be moved. And this is speaking about you and I. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. And that is why joy comes every? Oh, okay. So you're getting it now. Verse 6. The nations raised, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered, uttered his voice, the earth melted. God raised his voice and the earth melts. Yet we still fear our circumstances. Yet we still fear our bills. Yet we still fear our sickness. Yet we still fear depression. Why? If you have the one that lives inside of you that opens up his mouth and the earth melts, why are we afraid of the devil and his minions? That is why I can have rest no matter what I go through. Because when my God opens his mouth, it is done. It isn't, you know, Christians have this nice dancing they do in church where They'll get a young person and the earthly people are, the demons are tracking it. And then Jesus is there coming in between fighting. The biggest load of nonsense because Jesus is not fighting the devil. When Jesus steps onto the scene, it is done. The devil runs like a coward. Because that is what he is, as a coward. Jesus is not going to come home. Do you, do you really think the devil and his minions have the power to make Jesus sweat and fight? No. The moment he speaks, the earth melts. That is the God that we serve. Our God is stronger than any enemy. And he says, he is your refuge and he is your strength. Oh, but God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I am weak. But I'm glad you're weak because the moment you're weak, he is strong. And when he is strong, the earth melts. Without even lifting a finger, just speaking. So maybe we must stop speaking what we want to speak over our life and say, God, may you speak over my enemy. May you speak over my circumstances. Verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Shelah. Come behold the works of the Lord who has made desolation in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear into two. He burns the chariots in the fire. And here is the secret. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Because sometimes when we go through a time of turmoil or a storm, we open this thing too much. And we eat of the fruit of our lips. So sometimes when you go through a difficult time, just know that this God that opens his mouth and the moment he utters a word, the earth has the capability to melt into pieces. You still have to use a shovel just to move a little bit of sand, sweat and get blisters. God just say a word. I sounded American there. <laughs> God just says a word and the earth melts. That is the God that we serve. So he is our refuge and our strength. So you are not as weak as the devil tells you you are weak. You are not as weak as your parents or your family or someone else tells you you are. You are as strong as he is because he is your strength in all things. But it will take a person that can say, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. When you go through difficult times, we sometimes put so much pressure on ourselves to perform. I think our generation is one of the generations 
I hope it doesn't go worse for the future generations, but I think our generation is one of the generations that's more performance-based than any other generation ever. If you look at how many matrix commit suicide because they cannot perform the way their parents want, it is sad. But it's because we don't have the peace of God. It's because we don't understand the grace of God and His goodness and His strength that He has given us. And we as people put that pressure on ourselves and we put that pressure on our peers. And remember, what you sow, you shall reap. So if you put pressure on other people, guess what's going to come to you? Pressure. And that is why we must be able to receive the grace of God in a moment of just yielding to Him and going into His presence with boldness, not with crying. You see, God wants you to come with boldness. A person that is bold does not have, is not sin conscious. A person that has comes to Him with boldness is not same conscious. It is not condemnation. There is no guilt in that person. Why? Because before you go to Him, you are bold. Sin takes your boldness away. So when you go into God's presence, He's not waiting for you to, Oh, Jesus, oh, you know, you know. You have these people, they want to, Make a drama for Jesus. And that is why your life is a drama. No, I'm serious. The moment you go to his room, those stuff is not in his presence. Except if you hold on to it. God does not remember. The Bible says, God remembers your sin no more. So you go into his room with boldness. What? To receive strength. To receive refreshment. To let this river that is placed already inside of you. That this river can flow. And when this river flows, there is life in everything that it touches. Maybe your healing. Maybe your body. Maybe your mind. Maybe your finances. Wherever this river touches, it shall bring forth fruit. Are you with me? Save me. My life will bring forth fruit. And that... Because of all the pressure and all the anxieties that we put on ourselves, we burn out. And we're not able to run the race that God has called us to run as Christians. And it even makes us to want to be isolated. Don't want to come to church. Don't want to spend time with your family. Spend time with people that cares about you. And that is what burnt out does to you and I as a Christian. Some people even become sick. And some even turn against their family members, not because they are bad. I want you to understand, if someone goes into a burnout, it's not because they are bad. It is just because they are weak in a certain area, or it's a thing that they have to face to become stronger. Are you with me? Sometimes when people get burned out, it is self-inflicted. It is calling afflicted. Jesus had anxiety once. Because of the great calling that he had on his life. He knew that if the next day he's going to have to go... And die on the cross. And he was so, had so much anxiety and fear that he started to bleed sweat. His sweat became blood. But it was for a purpose. But he, he knew that if God is for him, everything will work out for the better. And that's why I say, God, not my will, but your will be done. If it's not your will, let this cup not pass me. Because you understood, I'm not going to fight this thing because then maybe something else will go more. I'm just going to surrender to your will. Sometimes when you write a test, let's just write the test, then going back and find out why are we writing this test. Write the test and pass the test. Are you with me? <laughs> and sometimes when we go through these times of burnt out, our tongues become sharp. And it's not because you hate the person next to you. And I'm guilty, you are guilty, I believe. I'm transparent tonight. We all go through these things. But I don't want you to have so much guilt and shame any longer on you because God knew that you're going to do it before you even done it. And he has given you grace to overcome this thing. Are you with me? So the moment you can forgive yourself and the moment you can move on, you will not have this yoke and this heaviness on you any longer. You'll be able to run the race that he has called you to race. Run. Are you with me? Because there is a place in his presence where he gives you rest. A place of supernatural rest. And this happens in a supernatural time. I know people say when you go through a burned out, it doesn't take you six months. Some people even take off from work for six months to a year to go out of burnt out. And I understand it. I'm not saying I am heartless towards those people. I understand in the physical, you have to go through that process. And I was in my mind because I was this year burned out. Physically, emotionally, I was just burned out. 
And I was like, God, how am I going to restore myself? Because I can't be away from church for three months. I can't be away from church six months. It's impossible. How many of you know it's impossible? But I had to rely on God to do it in a supernatural manner and a supernatural way for me. And he has done it. But I want him tonight to do it for you and your family. That you don't have to go through the way of the world to go through it six months, three months. No. The devil and the locust have stolen too much from you already. My prayer tonight is that you receive peace and rest supernaturally from God tonight. Are you with me? Matthew 11 verse 28 says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy, labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So when you read the scripture, you must see that God wants to deal with your problems. He's inviting you, come to me with your problems. Don't come to me acting like you, everything is fine. Come to me with your promise. And when you come, I give you a prophetic word. I will give you rest. So he gives you an invite, but he also gives you a promise with that invite. Come to me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your soul. Because you can only prosper as your So you need rest. You need peace for your soul to prosper. It's not the amount of hours that you work that will make you prosper. It is, is your soul prospering? Verse 30 says, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Bless you. My burden, your burden is off from my shoulders. Can I be real? Want me to preach just some nice 10 point sermon that's going to make you jump up and down? After tonight, I pray that you will have his presence rest upon you, that rest will be your portion and peace will be your portion.